Welcome to another lesson video from Jiggy Math. We will be talking about how to derive trigonometric identities using complex numbers, and this is the second part. The first part uh, is about the trigonometric ratios of multiple angles. So this time, it will be about the powers of trigonometric ratios, like cosine to the power of 5, or sine to the power of 3, or tangent to the power of 4. So now before we are going to derive those identities, uh, we will be needing the following identities, okay? So uh, let z be equal to cosine x plus i sine x. Now, if we are going to get 1 over z, that will be equal to 1 over cosine x plus i sine x. Now we can rationalize this. So by doing that, we have to multiply this by the conjugate of the denominator, and that will be cosine x minus i sine x all over cosine x minus i sine x. So if we multiply both, this will be equal to, now looking at this one, so when you are multiply conjugates, that will be equal to cosine squared x plus sine squared x. So you're going to square the real part, then add it to the square of the imaginary part. And uh, by having that, cosine squared x plus sine squared x is a Pythagorean identity which is just equal to 1. So therefore, we are going to be left with just cosine x minus i sine x. So 1 over z is equal to cosine x minus i sine x. Now, by having z and 1 over z, so what we can do is we can get the sum of uh, the two. So the result is um, going to be cosine x plus i sine x plus cosine x minus i sine x. So looking at the result, it's just going to be equal to 2 cosine x. Now, we can also get the difference. So by doing that, we will now have cosine x plus i sine x minus uh, the quantity cosine x minus i sine x. So this time, it will be cosine x that will be canceled out or because it's just going to be equal to zero. So the result of this is 2i sine x. Now by using the Moivre's theorem, we can get the power of this complex number. So z to the power of n is equal to n power of cosine x plus i sine x. And we know that this is equal to cosine nx plus i sine nx. Now, same thing that we can also get the n power of 1 over z. And that will become cosine nx minus i sine nx right? And ha by having z to the power of n and 1 over z to the power of n, we can add them together. And the result is going to be equal to cosine nx plus i sine nx, then plus cosine nx minus i sine nx. So simplifying this, we can cancel out the i sine nx uh, and negative i sine nx, and the result is just going to be equal to 2 cosine nx. And the difference of the two will result to uh, 2i sine nx. Okay, so these are important identities that we will be using in uh, deriving the powers of cosine and sine theta or sine x. So if you are going to get now the identity for cosine x or for the power of cosine x, we will be using this z plus 1 over z equals 2 cosine x and z to the power of n plus 1 over z to the power of n equals 2 cosine nx. All right, now let's try doing that. For us to derive the identity for cosine cube x, we will begin with finding the cube of z plus 1 over z. So we will be using binomial theorem for this and that will be equal to z cubed plus 3z squared times 1 over z plus 3z times the square of 1 over z plus the cube of 1 over z. Then we need to simplify this and it is equal to z cubed plus 3z. The third term is plus 3 over z 
then plus 1 over a z cubed. So the next thing to do is we need to group, okay, if you notice the first and the last term, so we can group them as like this, this is z cubed plus 1 over z cubed, and then for the middle two terms, we can bring out the 3, so plus 3 times z plus 1 over z. Now, from the uh, uh, earlier, we actually uh, derived this identity, which is the sum of z and 1 over z, which is equal to 2 cosine x. So that means this z plus 1 over z is just going to be equal to 2 cosine x to the power of 3. And then uh, what about for z cubed plus 1 over z cubed? So remember, we also have this zn plus 1 over z to the power of n, which is equal to 2 cosine nx. So that means this one, our n is equal to 3. So this will be equal to 2 cosine 3x plus 3 times 2 cosine x. So in this case, we can uh, remove the bracket and that will be equal to 8 cosine cube x is equal to 2 cosine 3x plus 6 cosine x. So now we are going to derive the identity for cosine cube x. So what we need to do, the last step, is to divide everything by 8. So cosine cube x is equal to 1 fourth cosine 3x plus 3 fourths cosine x. So this is now our identity, our formula for cosine cube x. Now let's try deriving an identity for sine, uh, for a power of sine x, okay? So let's have, okay, let's try sine to the uh, power of 5x, okay? So this time we will get or we will use the difference of z uh, and 1 over z. So since we are deriving for the uh, for the power of 5, so we need to expand z minus 1 over z to the power of 5. So again, using binomial theorem, uh, we are expecting 6 terms for this. So this is equal to z to the power of 5 plus 5z to the power of 4 times negative 1 over z. Be careful about the negative. And then plus 10z squared times the square of negative 1 over z. Having bracket there is very important. Then plus 10z squared times the cube of negative 1 over z. Then plus 5z times the fourth power of negative 1 over z. Then negative 1 over z to the power of 5. Okay, now uh, we need to remove the brackets. And the second term is going to be equal to negative 5z cubed because we can cancel here z to the power of 4 and z. So that results to z cubed, right? And then the square of a negative is positive. So this is going to be plus 10. Uh, z cubed over z square is just z. So that will be plus 10z. Okay, now in this case... Uh, negative 1 or negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative so that will give us negative 10 and then uh, z square over z cube okay will be uh, z to the power of negative 1 so this results to negative 10 over z okay likewise uh, that will give us a, a positive 5 over z cube and the last term will be negative 1 over z to the power of five okay now the same thing that we did for cosine cube x okay so what we can do is we can group uh, the first and last terms okay and that's going to be z to the power of 5 minus 1 over z to the power of 5 and notice also that the second term and the second to the last term we can also group them and then bring out negative 5 and then that will give us z cubed minus 1 over z cubed and then the middle two terms, 10z minus 10 over z, we can group that, bring out 10, and then that will give us 10 times z minus 1 over z. So once again, recall our identity, z minus 1 over z is equal to 2i sine x, and then z to the power of n minus um, 1 over z to the power of n is equal to 2i sine nx, okay? So we will be using this. Okay, notice that it is equal or it is the same as this. So therefore, we can replace z minus 1 over z by 2i sine x and then raise it to the power of 5. And then again, I mentioned already that we will also be using this to, uh, uh, to have an equivalent expression for this one. And that will be equal to 2i sine uh, 5x, okay, because our n is equal to 5. 
and then for this one our n is equal to 3 so that will be negative 5 times 2i sine 3x then this one is just 2i sine x so this will result to 10 times 2i sine x okay so removing the bracket and this will give us a 32 okay 32i to the power of 5 and then sine to the power of 5x is equal to 2i sine x removing the bracket this will give us negative 10 i sine 3x plus 20i sine x now since we are after the fifth the fifth power of sine x so what we can do is divide everything by 32i to the power of 5. Now notice that i to the power of 5 is equal to i because i to the power of 5 is equal to i to the power of 4 times i. But since i to the power of 4 is positive, so i to the power of 5 is just equal to i. So this is just the same as 32i. So that's what's going to that's what uh, we are going to divide to the whole expression. So as a result. Uh, 2i over 32i is just going to be equal to 1 over 16. So i will be uh, removed because that is just equal to 1. The negative 10i over 32i will result to negative 5 over 16 sine 3x. And 20i over 32i, we simplify it, uh, will become plus 5 over 8 sine x. So looking at this, this is now our identity, okay? This is now our formula for sine to the power of 5x. So there you have it, um, the procedure in deriving the identity for the powers of sine and cosine are basically the same. So if you are deriving identity for cosine, so what you can do is uh, you use the z plus 1 over z and z to the power of n plus 1 over z to the power of n. Now while you are deriving for the power of sine, then you are going to use the uh, identities as z minus 1 over z and z to the power of n minus 1 over z to the power of n. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and see you again next time.